The mid-1840s was an early milestone in the development of sailmaking. The US Navy were undecided between flax, the common sail material which had to be imported from Europe, or the newer cotton sails, which were produced domestically in the United States, but still relatively unproven. Flax was seen as to be stronger, the cotton was seen to stretch less and thus hold more wind. A yacht race in 1851 became the deciding factor when the yacht, America, visited the UK flying sails made from Egyptian cotton and raced against the British fleet who were all using flax sails. The rest, as they say, is history, as America beat the British boats to start what has become known as the America's Cup, the oldest trophy in international sport. Sail design has developed in innovative leaps rather than a smooth evolutionary progression over the years. In the case of performance sailing, sailors are looking for stiffer and lighter structures to maximize their performance, whereas the needs for a cruising sailor are quite different. hundreds if not thousands of years, sails were made from woven materials of natural fibers, whether it be flax or cotton, that was how sails were made through uh, history. And it wasn't until the modern age of chemistry that synthetic fibers came into the mix with woven materials and in the 1950s and early 1960s. Polyester, Dacron fiber became the fiber of choice for woven sailcloth. Sail making has come a long way since the early years and continues to evolve to meet the needs of sailors from around the world. A significant milestone in sail making technology was the introduction of composite sails that prompted the move from making laminated sails to new composite structures. The most important and significant development in sail manufacturing is the transition from laminated sails to composite sails. So sails are moving away from a sandwiched laminated construction to a composite construction much more like aerospace or boat building or composite structure where there's no more films carrying the fibers but a amalgamated composition of tapes and fibers and prepreg resins. Precision and performance are two key characteristics of sail making today. Technology continues to be at the forefront of the design and manufacture of sails, whether it be for high performance racing yachts, round the world cruisers, or Olympic classes. North Sails has a deck up solution for sail design, and it starts with 3D modeling of the rig and the deck structure. We then take that 3D model and put a molded shape of the sail onto the rig model. We then pass aerodynamic forces across that rig and sail model and determine the sail loads. The sails then deform because of that um, aerodynamic pressure. And we then take that um, FEA analysis, pass it back to the molding program and run a cyclical loop until the, the forces are balanced and stabilized. So it's a uh, linked system of software that um, includes three-dimensional CAD modeling, aerodynamic flow modeling, and FEA analysis. North Sales is probably best known for our success in the America's Cup. Um, at the top end of the, of the uh, sailing competitive world, but we're also famous for making rugged round the world racing sails, Olympic class one design racing sails, and uh, rugged, durable, value-oriented cruising sails as well. 
Sailing is developing at a rapid pace in Asia, and as wealth increases, the desire for boats to experience a marine leisure lifestyle grows. The hosting of international sailing events in the region has fed this growing appetite for sailing. And Asia is like no other part of the sailing community today. They're, they're linked in with, with everyone. You're seeing more crossover, more events coming to Southeast Asia, Volvo Ocean Race, Extreme 40. So you're seeing a intermixing of Asian sailing with the global sailing community. Homegrown events are also attracting more and more interest from regional sailors. This is clearly evident with the number of regattas and the popularity of such regattas in Thailand. Various teams that come to, the, to this country for, uh, for the regattas, especially like King's Cup, um, Phuket Race Week and Top of the Gulf on the other side, you know, we've got quite a few different teams that come from all over the world. The 5th China Cup International Regatta took place in Daoyu Bay, Shenzhen, China. Based at the Shenzhen Marine Sports Base, the sailors were tested on round-the-island geometric and windward-leeward courses over a diverse range of wind conditions. The regatta kicked off with a passage race from Hong Kong to Shenzhen and was followed by the opening banquet at the Sheraton Damisa Resort in Shenzhen. Over the next three days, the six classes of boats battled it out for the 2011 title. The largest class was the one-designed Beneteau First 40.7 with 28 entries. Racing was tight in all classes, with many of the top regional sailors and sailors from around the world taking part. A total of 84 boats, representing more than 20 nationalities, competed over the seven race series, which culminated in a lavish closing banquet, where the winners of the 5th China Cup International Regatta were celebrating. The biggest ever delivery of super yachts to Phuket arrived recently after a voyage aboard a 532-foot transport vessel which left Genoa in Italy on October the 7th and arrived in Phuket on October the 28th. Organised by Dockwise Yacht Transport, there were seven yachts aboard, including five motor yachts over 100 feet in length and a 95-foot catamaran. This was the most complicated lift-on, lift-off procedure by Dockwise Yacht Transport to date, and all went well as the yachts were unloaded at Phuket's deep sea port. To celebrate the super yacht's arrival in Phuket, the Asia Pacific Super Yacht Association organized a party for the crew on board, welcomed them to the region. With Southeast Asia developing as a new market for European yacht builders and an emerging cruising destination for yacht owners, more arrivals are expected in the future to join the growing number of super yachts now basing themselves in Asia.